Electrical engineering is arguably the best college major. It teaches you how to think, how to solve problems, and how to approach the real world with a reality lens, since the world is made up of physics. And if you understand physics and how to apply the physics, which is engineering, you get a really good grasp of reality, and that's really gonna help you in life. Especially if you study electrical engineering, which is based on electromagnetic physics, which is the foundation of modern technology. And I say this from experience, I'm not making this stuff up because I did a bachelor's, master's, and I'm finishing a PhD in electrical engineering. And I've made many mistakes along the way, but I've also done many things right along the way. And many of these things that I did really well were in my freshman year and that has paid off dividends. So in this video, I'm going to tell you seven things you should do if you're a freshman or incoming freshman in electrical engineering or any engineering major, really. And if you use this as a roadmap in your four years, you're going to absolutely crush it and you're going to be ahead of everyone. So the first piece of advice is that the goal is not to get good grades. The goal of college is to figure out your life and figure out what you want to do. And if you chose electrical engineering going into college, that's great. But there's a good chance that's actually not what you'll end up doing. So as you go through your classes and you take these introductory classes and you meet people and do things like that, one thing that should be in the back of your mind is, is this actually what I want? Am I enjoying this? Am I interested in this? Am I intrigued by this? And don't get me wrong, you don't have to love every bit of it. You don't have to like every bit of it, but you have to be at least interested in it. And now that you're in it, you take a look and see the classes you're taking, the professors, the people around you, constantly ask yourself, is this what I want? That is far more important than just going in and trying to get good grades just for the sake of getting good grades. Now, don't get me wrong, you will need good grades, especially if you want to apply for stuff later on. But I think from a big picture perspective, you want to figure out what you want first. Second piece of advice is you have to know that you're entirely on your own. No one's going to hold your hand, you have to really learn to become independent and be self starting. And what I mean by that is no one's going to come and tell you, hey, go apply for this, or hey, there's this opportunity here, or hey, there's this professor that's doing that. No one's going to present you with these things. Sure, you might see flyers, some people might introduce you to some things, but you're going to, it's, it's going to be entirely up to you to go ahead and, and talk to people, join projects, talk to professors, do all these things. You have to learn the skill or the character trait of being self motivated and self starter. And I see this everywhere, not just in engineering, in any area that I observe. Observe. the people who are absolutely crushing it, no one's telling them what to do. They're constantly going out and doing stuff themselves. And now they're not born that way. That's a skill or a habit that they develop and you can develop it as well. So I would strongly urge you to develop it. Become a self-starter and just go do stuff. Third piece of advice is I want you to understand the opportunity cost of not just the money you're paying for college, but the time. If you're gonna spend four or five years in a program, those are four or five years you could be spending doing other things. So you better make the most out of those four or five years in college and you better make the most out of paying all that money for college. Now, one thing you've done, which is wonderful, is study a major like engineering, which will have a financial return on investment, and also will give you ways to think and approach the world and see the world. So it'll have a time investment on your time as well. But it will, again, entirely depend on how you actually approach it. There, there's two students that can graduate with an electrical engineering degree. One guy has really learned the classes, asked questions, joined clubs, joined projects and worked on things hands on done internships. And there's a guy who just kind of cruised by and did absolutely nothing. Both of these people will end up with a degree, but one of them will be a lot richer in experience and will succeed later on in life uh, than the other person. So why don't you be this guy? Lesson number four is on a college campus, especially if you're going in person quite often, and you should go in person quite often if you get the chance, your main goal really is to make friends. It's not really to study or get good grades or whatnot. And sure, you want to have in the back of your mind that you want to figure out what to do with your life. But the main goal really is to meet people and bump into people and see what the other people are doing and tell them, hey, this is what I'm doing and ask what they're doing and then stop and think and ask, okay, is this what I want? Is this not what I want? And I say this because from experience, most of the things I learned in college, especially freshman, sophomore year, were from bumping into people who were doing something and I would think, oh, wow, this actually seems interesting. Should I be doing that? And then I go and ask them questions about it. And then I assess and then I join their project or club or whatever. Now you can develop the skill of approaching people or whatnot. There's tons of videos and online content on that. If you're somebody who's like, let's say more introverted and whether you get anxiety around people or whatnot, you can work on these things. But it's very important that you go approach people. And one easy way to do it is to just join clubs or join projects projects or join events where people are like expected to talk to each other about like a professional topic and that kind of already breaks the ice that's far easier than just like randomly approaching people on campus but ideally you want to talk to as many people as possible so you actually figure out what you want which brings me to the fifth piece of advice is that you want to talk to upperclassmen so don't spend all your time hanging out with freshmen go hang out with sophomores juniors seniors and see what they're doing and think about it you're going to eventually be in their shoes so why not go to these upperclassmen and ask them questions and see what they're doing and that will help you get 
insight on what will happen down the road. Uh, in fact, one of the reasons I switched to electrical engineering is when I was a sophomore, I met a group of juniors who were in electrical engineering. And I took a look at what they were doing and I envisioned myself doing what they're doing down the line. And I thought, oh, that's actually really cool. I probably should be working on that. And that's how I hit it off. Also, you'll figure out that just in college in general, like mostly freshmen are not so much focused on school. Some people will be like focused on actually getting things done and whatnot. But generally like junior seniors are like thinking about that next stage, which is job, graduation, grad school, whatnot. So these are really helpful people to talk to if you're trying to consider what to do for a career. Sixth piece of advice is you want to get as much hands-on experience as possible. And again, nothing against the classes. You're going to go to your classes and you're going to learn. And you're going to ask questions and whatnot. And that's going to be cool. But a lot of that is going to be theoretical knowledge. You really want to get as much hands-on and like learn by doing as possible. And seven is you want to be able to secure a summer opportunity. So summertime is usually like really good chance to go get hands-on learning or go get experience, whether you apply for an internship or you apply for some type of project, or you, even if you go back home and work on something online, whether it, whatever it is, try to secure something to do in the summertime as early as you can. That way you can actually like spend your time in the summer learning and not wasting that time. And if you're unable to find an internship at a company, I will be posting some remote internships for people to work with me on some projects that I think could evolve into something bigger. I uh, usually wear like around wearables and like wearable electronics. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned in like a month or two, I will be posting some stuff. Seventh piece of advice is you should go and watch all my videos relating to electrical engineering and engineering mindset. And no, I'm not just saying that because they're my videos, because think about it. I've spent the last nine years studying and working in engineering. And in those nine years, I've talked to tons of engineers and tons of people in the field. And I see engineering very clearly and I see reality very clearly. So if I were you, if I was a freshman or if I was a high schooler about to go into electrical engineering, and then I find a YouTube channel or some guy who has done electrical engineering and has done it exceptionally well, I would go and watch every single one of these videos and just learn as much from them as possible and absorb as much from them as possible and write comments, ask questions, and basically take advantage of the fact that you have a resource over here who has done it, who has walked the path and who has done everything. Now, if you're still doubting whether electrical engineering is the right major or whether you should switch something else, I've made a video about 17 reasons why someone should study electrical engineering and you should definitely go ahead and check it out. Peace, love.